Hello, my name is Bill Wepfer, Chair of the George W. Woodruff School of Mechanical Engineering at Georgia Tech. In 1885, the legislature of the state of Georgia authorized the formation of the Georgia School of Technology. What ultimately became known as Georgia Tech was founded in response to the need for social, economic, and intellectual regeneration of a region that was absolutely devastated as a consequence of the Civil War. At that time, Atlanta had 60,000 residents, and Atlanta had evolved into the machine tool shop in support of the textile industry in the Southeast. Georgia School of Technology opened its doors in October of 1888. The Institute welcomed 84 students, and their very first day they took an entrance exam. And I think in what's turned out to be true Georgia Tech tradition, seven of those students didn't pass and were required to do remedial work before they were ultimately admitted into the program. The school initially had five or six faculty members and the first chair of mechanical engineering, John Saylor Kuhn, was recruited toward the end of the first academic year. John Saylor Kuhn was a seminal figure in the history of Georgia Tech and spent 35 years as the chair of mechanical engineering. So the first eight years of Georgia Tech's existence were difficult years. A fire destroyed one of the academic buildings in April of 1892, and the student commercial shop, which was intended to generate products to generate income for Georgia Tech, was thousands of dollars in deficit. But somehow, the beginning group of mechanical engineering students and faculty survived and thrived and helped to set the agenda and the trajectory for what has now become an incredibly successful institution. We owe so much of, of what we experience today to their persistence and their dedication and their helping to set the culture of what has become Georgia Institute of Technology. And by the way, Georgia Tech had mechanical engineering before Georgia Tech played football. So time clearly doesn't permit me to, to speak to all of the various breakthroughs and impacts that the Woodruff School or School of Mechanical Engineering has had over the years. But I would like to point out three or four that I think are, are very noteworthy. Uh, the first one is in the early 60s, Georgia Tech was the first public institution of any notoriety in the Southeast that peacefully integrated its student body. We oftentimes don't take credit for this, but I think it reflects the kind of thoughtful, reflective, progressive leadership that the institution has enjoyed throughout the years. Clearly, a second aspect has been the fact that Georgia Tech has relentlessly moved as a consequence of uh, government investments during the Second World War through the Sputnik era into the 60s and 70s and has emerged as a major research university. And I'm really proud that mechanical engineering has played a critical role in that transition to a major international research university. A third element that, that I can relate to, when I became a faculty member in 1980, Students thought taking a trip to visit friends or relatives in Alabama was an international experience. And I have to tell you that the student body today come to Georgia Tech and expect to have an international experience in some other part of the world. And I think that global awareness on the part of both our faculty and our students is a very, very deeply enriching factor that makes life in the Woodruff School so good. Finally, I would be remiss if I did not mention and acknowledge the generosity of George W. Woodruff. In 1985, which was the 100th anniversary of the authorization of the founding of Georgia School of Technology, George W. Woodruff endowed the School of Mechanical Engineering, and we now honor him with our name, the Woodruff School of Mechanical Engineering. Uh, George Woodruff's philanthropy has enabled us to invest in students and in faculty. It's given our students and faculty that margin of excellence to allow them to achieve a level of success that otherwise they would not have achieved. The Woodruff School is the largest academic unit at Georgia Tech 
and in fact is the largest mechanical engineering program in the United States. Last fall we enrolled 2,103 undergraduates and about 814 graduate students. To give you a sense of our size, we graduate roughly 3% of the nation's mechanical engineering graduates in any one year. We have 96 faculty members. Our faculty is outstanding and they cover a wide range of research interests from the very, very small, such as the micro and nano systems, to very large scale systems as well. The Woodruff School of Mechanical Engineering has birthed many new ventures in its history. In 1962, nuclear engineering was birthed out of mechanical engineering, and in 1984, they came back to the Woodruff School, and to this day, nuclear engineering resides in the Woodruff School of Mechanical Engineering. For the most part, our School of Biomedical Engineering was birthed out of the Woodruff School in the middle 1980s. So our faculty and our students are incredibly innovative, very multidisciplinary, and are strong partners with other academic units and interdisciplinary research institutes all across the Georgia Tech campus. As we review the accomplishments of the past 125 years, in one way we see that nothing has changed. In 1888, Georgia School of Technology was founded to be a catalyst to drive the social, economic, and intellectual rebirth of Atlanta in North Georgia after the devastation of the Civil War. The Georgia School of Technology was tasked to create jobs and to generate wealth. Well, looking back and, and thinking about things here in 2013, we realized that our job still remains the same. We are here to generate wealth, create jobs, not just for Atlanta, North Georgia, and the state of Georgia, but the world is our oyster. We're a global university with an outreach to every continent in every country in the world. As we celebrate 125 years of engineering the future, we seek to celebrate the many accomplishments of our alumni, our students, our faculty, our staff, and use these as inspiration for us and for future generations so that they too can change the world.